CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for another excursion into the world of the macabre where we meet persons not quite like you or me because they have had experiences that often defy explanation. It's a world of mystery where meaning is obscure, but such a world exists. Its phenomena may arise from the mind or from the appearance of an apparition, a person surely dead many years. That is what we explore because such an experience can happen, even to you. You've heard the expression... If thought could kill, keep that in mind. It is at the heart of what you're about to hear. It's it's incomprehensible, Paul. But I saw it happen. I saw the portrait lose its colors and begin to crack, like a mummy exposed to the air. It's ruined. And a good thing, too. She was such a beautiful young woman. Now she's free. After 70 years. And so is old Andrew Scott. Our mystery story, The Woman in the Green Dress, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Michael Tolan. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine, and Exlax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. to understand the meaning of necessity being the mother of invention. That is how we got the wheel and how we learned to convert steam into energy. But many an inquisitive mind, without being prodded by necessity, has stumbled onto discoveries that substantially have advanced civilization. Electricity, for example. Well, Paul Maiden is a designer of jewelry and designs interest him. It is both his business and one of his hobbies the other being photography. He's spending the weekend with Kirby Small in his fine suburban house. Can you really take a picture in this subdued light, Paul? No, no problem. Fast film. Well, I could turn... No, no, Kirby. I like the natural light. The way the morning light surrounds the portrait. The sunbeam acts like a spotlight. Now, now, don't jump around. Time exposures are tricky. That portrait fascinates you, doesn't it? Now, hold it. There we are. I'll take another to be safe. Uh... Open up to another F-stop. And Dora doesn't like the portrait. There. That should do it. She doesn't? Uh, Something about the painting makes her uneasy. Uh, You feel the same way, I guess. No, I I just wonder who she was. That's one reason. Another is the unusual color, the green silk dress. Most painters back then wouldn't choose such a color for a portrait. Did you ask Dora about the woman? Well, she thinks it's some ancient relative, but she doesn't know. Uh, I found it in the attic when I brought down her suitcase. How's the new grandchild? Oh, just fine. Uh, Dora is staying with Susie for a week. I'm glad you could spend the weekend with me. We'll take some walks. Got an old church nearby. It's in ruins. Fine picture possibilities. Good. What? What do you make of this, Kirby? Hmm? Take a look at the lower right-hand corner of the portrait. What do you see? Well, I did notice that. Some sort of coat of arms, I suppose. But why, and what does it mean? I've no idea. It's really quite beautiful. The shape of a diamond, and it encloses three small birds. One with a branch in its beak. I've never seen anything quite like it. Well, before the lady in the portrait jumps out of the picture and bites us, let's go for a stroll. What a beautiful young woman. Chestnut-colored hair, fine features, and a proud expression on her face. How old would you say, Kirby? Oh, early 20s. No, no, I mean, how old is the portrait? Oh, well, your guess would be better than mine, Paul. 50, 60 years, I'd say. Maybe older. Mm, Even 70. And Dora has no idea who she is? Nope. Then she must have died young. (laughs) 
What do you think? Oh, it's wonderful. And a shame. The church is a ruin, all right. Yeah, the neighborhood changed, grew. So a new church was built. This one's in disuse. Only a very few parishioners cling to it and keep it going. Old folks. After Higby dies, he's the minister. I don't know if he'll be replaced. Oh, speaking of Reverend Higby, he's walking toward us. Uh, good morning. Oh, oh, it's Mr. Small. Good morning, Reverend. This is Paul Maiden. Well, how do you do? How do you do, sir? Paul's a very accomplished amateur photographer. Uh, you're welcome to take pictures, young man. Oh, thank you. Yes, I imagine that Mr. Small has explained the conditions you can see for yourself. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry it couldn't be kept up. Well, so am I. We do the best we can. There are a few volunteers. <laughs> but there's uh, no money for repairs. It's a pity. It's a small church, but it's authentic Gothic in design. You know, when I was appointed here 40 years ago, St. Luke's was prosperous. It uh, sparkled inside and out. Today, it's in decay. The old graveyard filled with weeds, tumbling down. How old is St. Luke's? It was built in uh, 1885. It's uh, 92 years old. Is the interior well preserved? Hmm? Unchanged. Ah, yes, it's called the Vespers. Uh, won't you join me inside? It's a short service. It's quite lovely. Afterwards, Mr. Maiden, I'll be glad to show you our relics. So oh, I'd like to attend. <laughs> I'll wait for you after the service. Maybe she worshipped here, Kirby. Beg pardon? The beautiful young woman in the green dress. Ah, Mr. Maiden. I enjoyed the service, Reverend Higby. Oh, uh, don't let me interrupt. <laughs> Sorry, this is uh, Miss Morrison. How do you do? How do you do? Why, it isn't that. <laughs> Why, of course, Mr. Small. Hello, Jenny. One does never cease. I haven't seen you here for years. Or oh, Dora. She's well, I trust. Yes, thank you. She's in New York for a week. Susie had another little boy. Oh, nice. Please remember me to them. I will. I'll be outside, Paul. All right. Uh, excuse me, Miss Morrison. I'll uh, be with you in a few minutes, Mr. Maiden. Is he... <laughs> no, that's hoping too much. Not a new member. No, no, no. He's uh, just interested as a photographer. Uh, uh, you were saying, Miss Morrison? Uh, well, my great uncle especially wanted me to apologize for not... Attending service the last two Sundays. Yes, I, I understand. He, he is a very old man. He's over 90. Mm -hmm. Perhaps sometime next week you could call on him. Mm, gladly. Yeah, Mr. Scott is our oldest member. and Well, except for his annual pledge, I, I don't know how St. Luke's could continue. <laughs> He's attached to the old church. Remember how he opposed building the new St. Luke's? Yes, yes, very well. And he's uh, <clears throat> infirm? Not in body. Oh, he tires quickly, but he gets around. Mm. That's not his problem, physical health. It's his mind. He wanders more than usual, and of course it worries well, me. Yes, of course. Uh, you uh, think he's uh, becoming senile? I don't know. Talk with him about ordinary, everyday things, and he's informed and sharp. But then he drifts off into his memories and, and lives them. Mm -hmm. He seems to be possessed by his memories. Possessed? Well, that's a dangerous word, Miss Morrison. Possessed by what? Uh, I'd rather have you hear about it from him. Something that goes back years and years, when he was just a young man. Maybe he'll tell you. Hmm. Yes, well, I'll, I'll pay him a visit. If he's had something on his mind for all this time, you know, he may want to share it with me. Andrew Scott's a good man, and God is forgiving. You'll just drop in, not mention our little talk. No, 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 no not unless he asks me. Why? Because what he's often told me is um, blasphemous and makes me ashamed. Uh, thank you, Reverend Hick. It, it was a lovely service. Hmm. hmm. Just what was that all about? Uh, Mr. Maiden? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I'm free now. This is really a fine old church. Th those stained glass windows are exceptionally fine. Yes, it's well made and the colors are unusually vivid. The uh, pulpit is made of fruit wood and hand curved. And these plaques on the wall, the stone tablets? Yes, in the olden days, the uh, wealthiest parishioners had them engraved and set into the walls in memory of someone departed. Ebenezer Scott, born 1865. Called to his maker, 1928, where he is at peace. Epitaph shall be his name alone. Mm -hmm. His son had that plaque placed there. Uh, Andrew Scott. 
I was just talking about him with Miss Morrison, uh, who is his grand niece. Yes, yes, yes. Is he still alive? <laughs> He's in his nineties. Well, well. Hmm. There's an interesting plaque here. Look, uh, Melanie Brett. That that coat of arms. That I found her. I beg your pardon. But the diamond-shaped design with the three birds enclosed in it. Yes, I was about to point that out. Mister Small I... has a portrait of this woman. Does he? <laughs> I beg your pardon, Reverend Higby. It, it it was rude of me, but no, 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 no. What is it that excites you about your uh, your discovery? Small found a portrait in his attic of a beautiful young woman, and it's of Melanie Brent. Well, I could swear it because the portrait has the same coat of arms or heraldic symbol painted in the lower right hand corner. Now I can identify her. Well, is that important to you? Uh, <clears throat> why? Well, because her expression is is intriguing. She's wearing a green silk dress, and that, that diamond design has some meaning. I'm, I'm somewhat of an antiquary, and old relics and designs interest me. I, I just have to know her story. Well, it is simple enough and tragic. She was born in 1886 and died in 1911. She was only 25 years old. 25 years old? How sad. I, I wonder... Uh, yes? Yeah. Would it be too much trouble to look through the church register for that period of time? And No, 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 certainly not. Now <laughs> you've aroused my interest. Uh, but you'll have to give me a little time. No, of course. I'd, I'd appreciate it very much. <sighs> Melanie Brent is a distant relative of Mrs. Small's, by the way. Oh, is that so? And now the old portrait has a name. Once it had a life. Who was she? Why did she die? How did she die? And what's the meaning of the unique design? Come in. Come in, Jenny. Don't lurk there as if you're looking at a corpse. You'll be on soon enough if you don't stop wandering, Uncle. No, humbug. It's my thoughts to keep me alive. Except for her nightly visits, I, I'd be glad to be dead. Nonsense. Matt, what's the use of talking? <laughs> there is none. No, my girl. Now... <clears throat> What about that medal? I'm taking it to a juror on Monday. You've had it a week, my dear. But you insisted that I take it to a designer, not just any mm, juror. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, have you found one? Uh, what about old Williams? He's still in business. Dead ten years. Mm. I found a man highly recommended named Maiden. I don't remember his first... Well, <laughs> well if that don't beat the Dutch. Mm. I just... Him. <laughs> you sound like you're wondering, my girl. No, it's St. Luke's. I wonder if he's the same man. Well, if he attends St. Luke's, he must be an antique. No, no, he's quite a young man. He was taking pictures and admiring the church. Higby showed him around. Yes, well, I do wish you'd see him soon, Jenny. That missing pearl may be hard to duplicate. I understand. Uh, hmm. uh, is there anything special on your mind, Jenny? It has a look of purpose on your face. Is it uh, the usual? You worry me, Uncle. No, humbug. I'm fit. I feel fine. Get around when I want to. Or... You still insist that, that, that she is with you every night? She has been for almost 70 years. I see her every night. And then I'm happy. We talk about what happened and how I avenged her. No one believes your story, Uncle. The facts bear me out. They're all mixed up crazy. They make no sense. They make perfect sense. My testimony got him acquitted. And then with the help of God, I willed his death. And he died. Uncle, you mustn't. You think I'm deaf? Emma girl? On this subject, what else can I think? Willed his death. Well, that's sacrilegious, Uncle. I'll account to God alone when I join Melanie. And that will be very, very soon. Her name was Melanie Brent. And she died when she was only 25? Yes. Why or how, I don't know, but Higby will find out from the church register. I'll drive out next weekend to see him. Stay here, Paul. You're welcome, and I'll go with you to see Higby. Oh, thanks. Did, um, did he have any idea of what the coat of arms means, that diamond-shaped thing? No, not offhand, but I've been getting at some thought. First, it's unique. Two reasons. The design itself is one of a kind. At least, I've never seen one like it. Yeah. And isn't it unusual for a woman to have a coat of arms? That's the other reason. 
I've never heard of one. Well, what could it mean? Three small birds and one with a branch in its beak. At the end of which there's a pearl. You know what I think it all means? Well, go ahead. Faith, hope, and charity. Could be, Paul. In the Book of Common Prayer, faith is regarded as an outward and visible sign of inward and spiritual grace. Someone had absolute faith in Melanie Brent. Some man, of course. Who might still be alive. Oh, no, no, Paul. Why, let me see. She died in 1911. Sixty-six years ago. At 25, assuming it's a young man we're talking about, and he'd be 91 or older. There's no one around here. Now, wait a minute. Well, who are you thinking of, Kirby? Old Andrew Scott. An interest in unusual designs, a portrait of a beautiful young woman in a green silk dress, her haunting expression, clues to a life long ended and forgotten. She is part of a family's heritage, their roots. You have them, so do I. You can be certain that they both are good and bad. What is the mystery that surrounds Melanie Brent? We'll search deeper when I return with Act Two. Paul Maiden's curiosity about Melanie Brent's portrait is leading him to the story of the young woman who died 60 years ago when she was only 25. Well, it's a weekday now. Paul is in his jewelry store. An elderly woman approaches him. May I uh, help you, madam? Uh, miss. I'm Miss Jennifer Morris. Well, well, my goodness, of course. Miss Morrison, I, I was introduced to At you. At St. Luke's by Reverend Higby. Well, I'm glad to see you again. You know, when we met, I thought I knew that name, Maiden, and now I know why. I've been trying to decide on a jewelry designer, and I settled on you. Oh, thank you. My great uncle has an old gold medal. A small pearl is missing from it, and he wants to have it replaced. Uh, let me show it to you. Here it is. For, for heaven's sake. You seem startled. Well, I, I am, Miss Morrison. I, I know the design. You've seen it before. Twice. The diamond shape with the three birds enclosed in it. Ah, oh, so that's where the missing pearl belongs. On the end of the branch being held by the topmost of the three birds. And it's on the portrait and on the wall tablet in your church. It, it is? It's the coat of arms or an emblazonment of a woman named Melanie Brent. There's a, a portrait? Yes. Mr. Small found it in his attic and, and now it hangs in his living room. I've been trying to trace her genealogy. May I ask why? Well, curiosity more than anything else. Because it's a haunting portrait. The young woman is very beautiful, and she died when she was only 25. Well, perhaps you know the story. I'd... It's better forgotten, Mr. Maiden. Oh? Well, I, I don't mean to pry. She is long dead, and so is the scandal. I see. He said there was a portrait, but we didn't believe him. He? Your great-uncle? It's his design, that diamond shape thing. Would you object if I visited him, Miss Morrison? Not if you'll be discreet. He's old and infirm. A shock could very well... I understand. You could repair his medal and return it to him. Who was Melanie Brent, Miss Morrison? I'd rather not say. She must have meant something to your great-uncle. He's still obsessed with her. Well, hello, Mr. Maiden and Mr. Small. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, Mr. Higby. Uh, thank you for seeing me again. No, not at all, not at all. But I uh, I can't help you very much. There's no entry in the church register about Melanie Brent? Uh, I have it here. You uh, you may see for yourself. Oh. Melanie Brent, born April 27th, 1886, baptized July 15th, died September 9th, 1911. Uh, her parents, the godparents... And half the page torn out. Now, who did that? I, uh, I have no idea. It is most unusual. What would have been written there? Oh, what she did for the church, her confirmation, probably her marriage, if she married, and uh, a few lines about her death and her burial. And half the page is torn out. The scandal. Scandal? Miss Morrison said there was a scandal and that it had best be forgotten. 
Let me show you something. The diamond is cut. What a beautiful medal. It belongs to Andrew Scott. That diamond-shaped design is on the portrait of Melanie Brandt. It's carved on that wall tablet, and it's on this medal. Andrew Scott and Melanie Brent. No question about it. Miss Morrison said that he was obsessed with Melanie Brent. Mr. Higby, may I see the register entry under Andrew Scott? Yes, why, yes. It, uh, it would be in this register. Let me look. Uh, how did you get that old Paul? She brought it in for repair. The pearl at the end of the branch was missing. Mm. Oh, yes, yes, here it is. Andrew Scott, born 1882, and so on, so on, the usual. Oh. Yes? Read it. Uh, engaged to wed Miss Melanie Brent, but service never performed because of her sudden and tragic death. May God have mercy on her soul. Well. What happened to them? What happened to Melanie Brent and to Andrew Scott? She dies suddenly just before she's to be married. And his memories about her are... are blasphemous? Did he kill her? I noticed you speaking to Mr. Maiden, Miss Morrison. So nice to see him at service again. Uh, did you find time to see my great-uncle Reverend? I uh, tried, but he was indisposed. I have expected that. Hmm. Because of, uh, because of his obsession? Well, perhaps he realized it's better kept to himself... And with you. It's nothing I want to talk about, Reverend. But your burden with it, Jenny. I'm a minister of God. Share it with me and you will be comforted. I, I just can't. It's, it's too you know, incredible. Melody Brent received a Christian burial and Andrew Scott has always been a true church member. Yes, I know that. There is a scandal about them. Yes. Was your, was your great-uncle... Instrumental in her death. Oh, no. It was the other way around. Well, well I, I don't understand. Uh, Andrew Scott is still alive. And prays for death so that, so that he may join her forever. Uh, sit down, Mr. Maiden. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, old-fashioned. Uh, pardon me? Uh, sir, it's old-fashioned. It's gone out of style. Used to be a sign of respect for one's elders, but these are different times. I, uh, I have your medal, Mr. Scott. <sighs> so, Jenny finally did something about it. That's <laughs> good. Well, here it is. The design is unique. Yes, yes it is. I struck it myself. And the birds, they mean faith, hope, and charity? Well, how did you figure that out, young man? Because of its association with someone in the past. Well, this is good work, Mr. Maiden. Oh, thank you. Ah, the shade of the pearl is correct. Was that luck? No, sir. Oh? I'd seen the pearl before. Oh, well, and you're, you're not a member of St. Luke's Church, are you? No, but I've attended Vespers there a couple of times with Kirby Small. He used to be a member. So you noticed the heraldic symbol carved on the wall tablet, eh? That was the second place I'd seen it. Kirby Small has a portrait of Melanie Brent, which now hangs in his living room. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I, I knew it existed. Jenny's never believed me. Of course, she considers me a little adult, and well, she may. She doesn't believe that I'm with her every night. Well, Melanie Brent? Yes, my boy. Does that seem fantastic to you? That depends on what you mean. She appears to you? Oh, yes, yes, in a green silk dress. That's what she wears in the portrait, Mr. Scott. I know. You say it's in Small's house? It was in his attic. Jenny tries to persuade me to live in the present, but there is no present for me. My life ended in 1911. But you had a very successful career. Well, work was all that I had left. Are you aware that half the page in the church register about Miss Brent has been cut out? No, no, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. Was it because of what Miss Morrison said was a scandal? It was worse than that, Mr. Maiden. May I ask? Oh, no, it's none of my business. I'm, I'm curious about Melanie Brent, but I won't intrude on your memories. Why? Why are you curious, Mr. Maiden? Because... 
And you'll forgive me, I... Well, if I'd ever married, I... I wish it had been to someone so lovely. That's sentimental, but it's true. I'm sorry you lost her. I didn't lose her, Mr. Maiden. She was murdered. Hello, Uncle Andrew. Oh, my dear girl. Well, I am pleased to see you. Uh, what's that, Mr. Maiden? I saw leaving the house. Yes, yes, I like him. He's gone to Small's house to bring me the portraits. Uh, you, uh... Tell him the story. Only that she was murdered. Leave it at that. Yes, yes, he'll want to know why. You don't know why or how, Uncle. The why is simple enough. Rob Claridge wanted her as much as I did. And she chose me. So he kidnapped her and later killed her. The how is also simple. Claridge was a young doctor. One of his surgical instruments had been driven through her heart. Don't. But she had had her revenge. And I had mine. And that's what was miraculous. Dr. Claridge couldn't be in church and outside on the green near the pond at the same time. He was, though. At his trial, you testified that he was sitting right in front of you during the service. Yes, he was. I hated Claridge. I knew he'd kidnapped Melanie and had her hidden someplace. I saw her the night before she disappeared. She was wearing her green silk dress. That's the last I saw of her. The police must have been drunk. No, 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 that is not true. There were two of them, and they found Melanie's body in the rushes in the pond. And they found Dr. Claridge painted on the green, not 20 feet away. But he was sitting right in front of you in church. So he was. Your story is impossible. So it seemed. But during the service, I kept saying to myself, confess, confess. And the force of my thought and the will of God transferred his soul outside where the constables found him. Not him. His apparition, if anything. What they saw, they told in court. And they saw Claridge. But he was freed because you admitted he sat in front of you in church. That's true. But my words, confess, confess, drove into his soul. And soon after, he took his own life. I will, did, Jenny. And you don't see how incredible this is. Well, it may seem that way to you. It seems that way to anyone with common sense. I prayed for Claridge's death. That's sinful. I prayed for revenge, and it was granted. God saw to it. Oh, there is truth in the old proverb. Revenge is a morsel reserved for God. I can't bear hearing you talk like that. Oh, I am sorry, Jenny. But I have lived for over 90 years, and Claridge's death is all that has sustained me. If I understand what I've heard, I must say that I'm sympathetic to Jenny Morrison. Can a body be in two places at the same time? That's what Andrew Scott maintains, and the facts seem to bear him out. Dr. Claridge was in church with him, but the constables found this same Dr. Claridge on the green outside the church and near the pond where Melanie Brent was found murdered. Is it possible that Claridge could be in two places at the same time? We'll learn more when I return with Act Three. an event which deviates from the known laws of nature. There are many instances of them, most of them found within the framework of religions. Visions appear before a person and reveal the future and the course he must follow to make it come true. Is that what confronts us here, a miracle? Is it conceivable that a body physically could be in two places at the same time? Paul Maiden has returned to Kirby Small's house for the telltale portrait. He'd like to see the portrait, Kirby. Of course. What's the story about Melanie Brent? She was murdered in 1911. I don't know the details. I, I hope he'll tell me. Murdered? Hmm. Maybe that's why Dora kept the portrait in the attic. But she doesn't know who Melanie Brent was. That's true, but I think she sensed something about the portrait. I did, too. That haunting look. You felt it, too. Yes, I did. Give him the portrait, Paul. All right. You have my color enlargement. 
I must know the entire story, Paul. Well, if he tells me, I'll tell you. I wonder why Jenny Morrison or Andrew Scott never told Dora. Jenny's Dora's aunt, isn't she? Yes, but we never see her. That's another story. Leave it at this. Jenny's stiff-necked, bigoted. Jenny renounced her sister, Dora's mother, when she married me. I see. I think you do. And Andrew Scott? At the time I married Dora, he was another holier than thou. We went our way alone. It's mean to say it, but it's gratifying to discover that Scott and Jenny have a really big skeleton in their family closet. That truly is an incredible story, Mr. Scott. Yes, well, you don't have to believe it, Mr. Maiden. Nobody else does. Dr. Claridge was brought to trial because the constables found him lying on the green near the pond. They had to be drunk. Oh, they were cold sober. I spoke to them outside the church. So did the old minister. And they never changed their story? No, sir. They repeated it in court. And you had to testify that Claridge was sitting in front of you in a pew in St. Luke's? His physical body, Mr. Maiden. What other kind is there, Uncle? Oh, only God knows. It's extraordinary. It's absolute nonsense. My great uncle was so in love with a young woman that when she... when she passed on... Murdered, my girl. Don't avoid the fact and the word. What you're about to say, Jenny, is that I became a babbling idiot. You've thought that all your life. I appeal to you, Mr. Maiden. Well, I'd have to defer to Reverend Higby, Miss Morrison. This... this is beyond me. Well, in fairness to Jenny, who cannot abide scandal... It's true that after Melanie's murder, I was... Well, I was driven. I was torn apart, probably temporarily insane. But I remember Rob Claridge's trial and what I heard there. What did he have to say for himself, Mr. Scott? Ah, uh, he was an arrogant devil. He denied kidnapping Melanie and then stabbing her. But he could not deny that the weapon was his. And your testimony freed him. Uh, I'm an honest man. I trust God. Do you believe me, Mr. Maiden? I want to, Mr. Scott. Isn't Reverend Higby the person to to judge? The church knows about miracles. I asked him to pay you a visit, Uncle, but you were indisposed, you said. Will you see him? Won't you confess to him that your thoughts are sinful? I decline to see him for your sake, Jenny. The story is an embarrassment to you. But now, every time Dick and Harry knows it, so it's time it was laid to rest. Oh, no, that's rude to Mr. Maiden, my dear. Oh, I didn't mean him. I'm sorry, young man. But you'll tell Kirby Small, and he's sure to gossip about it. Dora will see to that. Well, I don't think they deliberately try to offend you or Mr. Scott. Why would they? That's neither here nor there. Yeah, there's a small skeleton in their closet. <laughs> you see, Mr. Maiden... They had to get married. Uncle. As in in my arrogant pride, Jenny and I turned away from them. They sinned. You didn't sin, except in your mind, thinking you willed Rob Claridge's death. He took his life because of his guilt. Say that he did, Uncle. Say he murdered Melanie. Say he killed himself. Did anyone ever prove it? The discovery by the constables of Rob Claridge sprawled, fainted on the green drove remorse through his soul as surely as he drove that knife into Melanie's heart. That's what you want to believe, Uncle. But I say again, it just couldn't be. <laughs> then we'll leave it at that. Mr. Scott, may I ask you a question about the portrait? Yeah? Did you commission it and when? Two months before the wedding date. And it was completed? As I intended to give it to Melanie for a wedding present. You saw it completed before the murder? Yes. I have the portrait in the hall. Before I bring it in, another question. Did you sense a premonition in her expression? Uh, no, no, not that I remember. It's there. You mean she anticipated her death? Oh, no, no, that, 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 that's provocative, Mr. Maiden. I also take it that you don't think... That I'm entirely damned. That I have told you the truth. The truth as you say it, Uncle. Which, Miss Morrison, may be the truth. Melanie was murdered. Claridge was in church, never expecting to be tried. At the same time, the constable saw him on the green near the body. That's why he was tried. And the fact of the trial is what led to Melanie's revenge. Oh, 
bring Higby. He must hear my story before I die. I must apologize for involving you in all this foolishness. Well, I involved myself, don't forget. Ah, yes. The portrait and the diamond-shaped coat of arms. Well, there's all our dirty linen, Mr. Maiden. I can accept the murder, but I simply cannot believe Uncle's story. Can you? Well, either his story is true and we doubt it, or he's dwelt so long on the young woman he loved and lost so cruelly that his hatred of Rob Claridge created the story in his imagination. Self-hypnosis? Yes. It sustained him for a long time. When did he become, well, obsessed with his memories? After he retired. He was 70 then and wealthy. I urged him to travel, see the world. But he became kind of a recluse. It's a tragic story. Jenny! We'd better go in. I'll bring the portrait from the hall. Uh, yes, Uncle, are you all right? Uh, I, I, I must have dozed off. Uh, is Mr. Maiden still here? I have the portrait for you, Mr. Scott. Which, by the way, Kirby Small wants you to have and to keep. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Place it over there against the wall, if you please. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'll, uh, take off the wrapping. My goodness. What a striking young woman. Shall I, uh, turn on the lights, Mr. Scott? No, 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 thank you. The early evening light is soft and warm. It was at this time of day that I last saw her alive. Wearing that same green dress. Oh, I thought she never looked so lovely. It was that night that she chose me over Rob Claridge. She was very beautiful. She still is very beautiful, Mr. Maiden. I see her every night. I believe that. Uh, but neither you nor Jenny believes what the constable saw in the green, do you? You explain it, Mr. Maiden. And what is this coming towards us now? Heaven, help me. The, the woman in the green dress is, is stepping out of the portrait and coming toward us. I don't believe my eyes. Valerie. He's, he's going toward her. Uncle, oh. he's falling. Here, no, I've, I've got him. Here, Miss, Mr. Scott. But he's still following the woman. And he's also in your arms. It can't be. It can't be in two places at once. But we saw it, Miss Morrison. I'll go. He's... He's dead, Miss Morrison. I... I'm so sorry. <laughs> you did say it, Mr. Maiden. Or am I the one who's crazy? No, I... I saw it. There were two of them. One walked toward Melanie Brent and vanished. Not an apparition, a whole man. And the other is here in my arms. Ah, Mr. Maiden. Bad news, Reverend. He, he just died. Oh, may God bless his soul. Amen. It, it was sudden. It it happened not five minutes ago. And, uh, Miss Morrison? Well, under control now. The circumstances were so strange. You'd, you'd better hear them from both of us. Oh, please come in. It's the, uh, the Reverend Higby, Miss Morrison. I am so very sorry, Jenny. I... Reverend, I... Reverend, I... We have just witnessed... A miracle. We saw my great uncle call to God, and he... He walked out of his body and into eternity. You say that Andrew Scott willed Rob Claridge's death? By driving his soul out to the green where the constables swear they found him lying prostrated near the murdered body of Melanie Brent. And we just saw Andrew Scott walk away with the woman while I held him in my arms, dead. It... Can it be possible, Reverend? 
May I see that portrait? You haven't answered my question, Reverend. So in, in a moment, my dear. The portrait's in his study. Shall I... No, no. I'll walk in there. Look. Is that, is that the portrait? Miss Morrison, something's happened to the portrait. Please come here. The heavens mean. What happened to it? The colors are faded and flesh is sag. It's cracked and chips of paint have fallen away. It's what's left of a woman who was 25 and died almost 70 years ago. Did you say the portrait depicted a young woman? In glowing health, wearing a green silk dress. A beautiful young woman. It was in perfect condition when I unwrapped it. What can it mean? He moves in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. You and Mr. Maiden have witnessed one of them. Miracles happen only to those who believe in them. My great uncles did. And now he's reunited with the woman in the green silk dress. I don't think our story requires much comment from me. You believe or you don't believe what happened to old Andrew Scott. But before you make up your mind, I suggest that you reflect on the broad subject. Miracles do come to pass. There's a world apart within each of us and a world apart from all of us, which we do not understand. Those are facts. Perhaps we should leave it at that. I'll be back shortly. Men's lives can be controlled, but not their wills or their thoughts. Andrew Scott's life ended. Melanie Brent was murdered, but he willed her revenge, and it was achieved. Because of what the constables saw on the green near the pond outside St. Luke's, and there was no gainsaying their testimony, even though it was incredible. But was it? Our cast included Michael Toland, Lois Kibbe, Guy Sorrell, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. That's another one of those words. Sure. Yes, but suppose I devote a lifetime of hard work and, and, and I fail. The devotion is your success. <laughs> Madame, you breathe rarefied air. My name is Regina Summers. Uh, how do you do? Uh, I am Walter Owen. Ah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for talking to me, for spending so much of your time with a complete stranger. But you're not a complete stranger. Or even an incomplete stranger. Oh, uh, have we met? Yes. Yeah. I think we have. No, I, I... I don't think so. I mean, I say this because I'm sure I would never have forgotten. You're how old? Thirty? Yeah. We met, I think... Before you were born. Oh, before I was born? Yes, I'm sure of it. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.